What's up everybody, Fritz here, coming back at you from SV Bimmer. In today's video, we're featuring our second build episode, and it's a car that you've probably seen before. In fact, it's quite famous, and it is indeed Wendell's E90 M3. Let's get into the video. With years as a BMW enthusiast and his experience in biotech, Wendell knew there would only be one BMW with the DNA to pull off the trifecta he was looking for. So when he found the E90 M3 in space gray and fox red interior, their journey began. Whether you're brand new to the E90 platform or you're a veteran in the game, you've probably seen Wendell's car before, whether it be on Instagram, magazines, or more than likely another YouTube video. But you've probably got to never know the artist behind this masterpiece. So Wendell, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got introduced to the E90 platform? Sure, so um, I'm Wendell Wilkham, part of Team Endless Projects. I started off modifying cars around 1995 Started in the JDM scene, worked my way into Euros with Volkswagens, Audis, and then I eventually got into this E90. I got into cars in general because of my dad. My dad restored and modified uh, older Mercedes-Benz, Datsun 240Z, so naturally I got into it as well. Out of all those cars, what probably leaned you the most towards BMW? My family is German by ethnicity uh, on my dad's side, so I kind of leaned towards German cars. BMW had uh, the heritage that I really liked and I was drawn to. Uh, the look, the uh, motorsport, everything, I liked BMWs. I, when I first saw the E46 M3, that was my first love uh, for BMWs, so. The E46, I think a lot of us would agree, is a wonderful piece of art. You spoke on the heritage of, of BMW and kind of the history behind it. It's not very easy to, say, break into that market, but your car is actually featured in quite a few magazines and is actually making a big splash, not just in the E90 generation, but BMW entirely. Could you tell us a little bit about the accomplishments behind your car? Sure, so uh, probably the biggest accomplishment that I'm proud about for this car uh, it was the cover car for Performance BMW, November 2019, the magazine. And so that's the first magazine it was in, as well as uh, Super Street. I was featured with one of my best friends who also has a BMW. Okay, so that point in which that you're most proud of is 2019. So at the filming of this video, that's only three years ago. Yeah. Or going to be three years. But you've had this car longer than that. How long have you been with your car? I've had this car for about 10 years now. So it's been a long built, probably well-deserved point as far as uh, having your car featured there. So that's awesome. I think that's one thing that we want to highlight here is that Wendell's been with this car for quite a while now. So it's not like he bought it and it was ready or he bought it and then turned it around the next day. He actually took time to be with this car from a very specific loadout as far as what you wanted in a car. What would you say was the goal behind this car as well as what was important to have on this car for you to have that stepping off point? So when I purchased this car, I already knew it needed to be three things. Basically like the ultimate daily driver because I did daily drive this car for a few years when I first owned it to be a show car because that's you know my background i've been showing cars for a really long time and of course i wanted to do this with my pride and joy and then third would be a track car so it would have to be a little bit of each of that so the big thing is the trifecta here a lot of people aspire to do one of three or they try to do more than one but it doesn't really pan out that way but i think your car blends the best of all three thank you what would you say is probably the first thing that you have to do with the car in order to achieve that goal? So for me personally, I feel a suspension would have to be the first thing that you would do to a car. And in this case, um, I ended up on these coilovers right now. Uh, I initially started off with uh, the KW Haas kit and I realized that uh, over time um, that didn't get me to the ride height I wanted. Eventually swapped over to the Olin's Road and Track system, which by the way is my favorite coilover ever. It rides the best, the you know drivability, the ride height, everything is perfect about those. The only thing I didn't like about it was that the spring rates were a little soft. Uh, the better I got into you know doing track days and stuff. So it kind of outgrew the spring rates on that. And I eventually ended up on these AST 5200s. Which one out of those three would you say is good for the daily? 
100% Olin's. Anytime anybody asks me for a recommendation on coilovers, I always say the Olin's Road and Track. They're a little bit pricey, but I feel like they're the one and done type of coilover um, if you want to you know, save your money and go that route. So that could even dip into the show car aspect. Yes. Okay, right on. Since we're in that area and we're right here, moving out from the coilovers, could you tell us a little bit about the, probably like the brake system and, and the wheels that you have on right now or the wheels that you started with and then progress to these? Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, we can go into the brakes first. So with the brakes, they're kind of like a Frankenstein build. They were done by a race team in Poland. This is a retrofit kit. The front is an eight piston caliper that came off of Audi R8 or uh, Lamborghini Gallardo that are retrofitted uh, via brackets uh, to this. The reason why I went that route, it uses a stock rotor size. Uh, it's important to me because I need to run uh, an 18 for the track and not be limited by any kind of 18. I can run any wheel uh, with this brake setup. And in the rear is a four piston uh, off of a Porsche Cayenne that's retrofitted. Also the, the stock uh, rotor size. The rotors are a two piece rotor from ECS, which have been great so far. And then, so for the wheels, uh, I lost count how many wheels I put on this <laughs> car, but this is the current set, which I'm probably not going to get rid of. They're BBS RT88s. Everybody's familiar with the E88. It's basically the same thing, except these come two piece from the factory and I had these converted to a three piece wheel. I mean, they're made mostly for larger applications. If you notice, I mean, this is a 19. If you see an E88, that's 19. It has a different type of lip on it. Um, and that's why I didn't go with the E88. I don't like personally how the step lip looks on, on a 19. Uh, on the RT88, it looks better because the face is slightly bigger. I don't think many people would disagree that the setup that you have on there now looks really good. Thanks. I think a lot of E90s aspire to have this type of look, especially if they're gonna go for, would you say that this is more show daily? It's, it's show and daily. I call them my pretty boy wheels. Uh, okay. They're, 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 they're there. I mean, especially because of the polished lips, um, it attracts, you know, a, a good, a good amount of attention to it. You know, the little details I did to it, like the, the matte brushed finish on it. Um, and the, the finish is called double dark tint or DDT. I actually um, like that finish. Thank it's you. really nice. Thank you. Good contrast. If this is your pretty boy setup, what is the down and dirty track setup? Uh, so uh, initially, I, I've been through a few track setups. It was an Apex EC7, 18 by 10 square, uh, plus 25 offset. And it was a 275, 35 uh, tire order running on that. I eventually changed to the BMW Motorsport wheel, which is the M235i wheel, which is a BBS wheel. Basically looks exactly the same as the EC7. I sold those and I went to BBS RIAs. Those were my track wheel. And uh, now I sold those. Currently, I'm running a T37 as a track wheel. Okay. And then all those iterations were a square setup? Except for the T37, yes. The one that you're currently on? Yes. Because BMWs, especially the higher performance models, come with a staggered setup. Why did you find it important to go to a square setup? Just for rotation purposes and tire life, it makes it super easy. I can go diagonal, sideways, front, back. And I noticed that my tires last a lot longer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not made of money, so <laughs> it, it was very beneficial for me. So I think that gets us a little bit more in depth with Wendell's car, because I think for the most part, people typically just see his car on Instagram or they see pictures or beauty shots, let's say, and they see a car as a whole. So now that you've gotten to know the car a little bit, let's get to the point where people are more familiar. How about we do a front to back covering the exterior of the car first? Sure, sounds good. Continuing down that path of a show car, probably the most noticeable thing other than coilovers, starting from the ground up, is the front lip, which we have. Yeah, so we have uh, a GT4 lip, and that's kind of the theme that I was going for with this car was a GT4 theme and a, like a gray red theme. So we have the car and fire rear GT4 style lip, and the canards are GT4 as well from PS Designs. Tow hook is uh, the Mod Chanel, and I have that in the rear as well, uh, an IND painted cover. We have the OEM BMW black chrome grills, which I love. And then for the headlights, actually, they're Bay Optics. I went with a pretty basic build because I didn't want to take away from the, the, the clean look of the car. They're a full DTM um, RGB ring. The standard uh, corner lens, but they're painted like an anthracite gray. 
just to kind of tone them down a little bit. Carbon fiber eyelids and then blacked out satin uh, housings. I do run these headlights in yellow mostly, but I have been kind of going to, to the white uh, right now. Holding everything together is the front bumper, and it's not just regular front bumper. I did custom shave the side markers here as well as uh, the headlight washer. A lot of people overlooked that. I wanted to make sure I did that. It maintains that smooth, clean look. It's basically a Euro bumper that I, I did custom. And then moving along, we have the IND black painted roundel, and then the Auto Technique little hood grills there. Moving on from our intake grill up top, we have another grill on the side that's purpose is to evacuate heat and pressure from the wheel well, which Wendell went with. It's the OEM BMW black chrome grill as well to match the front with the IND tinted signal lights here. And then moving along to the side skirts, these are force work carbon fiber side skirts, which kind of keep the, the look nice and flat here. And then to go along with the smooth theme, IND keyhole delete, which I love, but it's kind of scary not having a keyhole anymore. And then we have the OEM BMW Performance carbon fiber mirror caps. So what most people end up doing is they take that carbon fiber mirror cap look and they have a matching shark fin in carbon fiber. But Wendell, you actually did something a little bit different with your roof as well as a shark fin, right? Sure, yeah. So E90s didn't come with a carbon fiber roof from the factory. So I did the next best thing I felt, which was to paint the roof black. Um, this isn't just a regular black painted roof painted it the same color as my Volkswagen because that was kind of like my favorite car that I missed and I loved. It's painted Volkswagen Uni Black. Okay, right on. So this definitely has your own personal styling, taste, and history right on the top of the car. Now let's introduce what is arguably the lifeline of any car. So to go along with the red and gray theme of my car, I went with Golden Wrench Billet Fuel Cap there. A nice little touch to the car that a lot of people also overlook. Really happy about that one. And once Wendell has fueled up the jet, it's ready for flight, in which he runs two separate wings depending on his flight path. Yeah, so I actually run a GT4 wing on the track to kind of go along with the whole GT4 theme of the car. I prefer not to run it on the street, so I put these Downstar plugs here. I do have this BMW OEM carbon fiber trunk spoiler that I keep on the street, and then we can move along to the IND blacked out roundel, as well as their trunk badge. I do run a golden wrench taillight tint and it's for to kind of tone down the whiteness of the reverse light. Again, I do have the Mach Chanel tow hook and the IND painted tow hook cover. The upper part of the diffuser here is a CF part from Arkham and then we have a Varus CF lower under tray, uh, which is custom fitted for this car because they're made for a 92 Sweet, so you have a custom Varus under tray, but you're hiding something from us because you also have something custom hidden inside the trunk of your car, don't you? I do, I have a few items in here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's start with the most noticeable custom piece that you have in the trunk, your spare wheel. Yeah, so that's actually a full functioning spare wheel that matches exactly the wheels on the exterior here. It's built to I3 specs, so I believe a negative 56 offset. It will clear all my brakes, no problem, so I can put it on the front or the rear. I haven't mounted a tire to it yet because I kind of like how it looks without a tire on it. I can use it if I wanted to, but I prefer to use it as a display piece right now. All right, and then what do you have underneath that? So I have an OEM BMW trunk mat here. Uh, however, I did custom pipe that in fox red to go with the interior. And then you can see my external reservoirs from my coilovers there. I did play with a lot of different areas that I wanted to mount it. And I felt that that was the best uh, for looks as well as function. And then at the very back there, you'll see a custom rear strut bar that my friend did for me. Uh, we measured it, he had it welded, and I had it powder coated in Brembo red to match um, everything else that I have. But you also have a little bit of touch of red on the trunk here. Sometimes when I'm bored, I go along and uh, look for places that I can swap the hardware out for dressier looking uh, hardware. I measured these each one and I bought the Downstar uh, hardware kit with the red washers to go, again, go along with the red gray theme. It's just little details, man, that I'm really proud about with this car. So I mounted a JL 500 to one amp here just to you know, keep the full function of my trunk. I made sure to keep it nice and clean looking the way I trimmed the carpet, just the holes that I need for all the cables. And up top we have the audio control LC2I line output converter to get the sound signal uh, from the stock amp down below. And for the sub, uh, I went with a 
10 inch sub. I don't want to go too much on the weight. Oh, well, the 10 inch was perfect for carrier sound pleasure. So it's a 10 W3 V3 JL sub and it's mounted in a custom fiberglass enclosure that you know takes up this space nice and cleanly as well. The little thing here, since I do track this car, I wanted it to be quick disconnect. So on the fly, when I'm at the track, I can just unplug it and that whole enclosure comes out just to save a little bit of weight when I'm on the track. Now your sound system is not exclusive to the trunk as you have with the overall theme with your car. It's very well balanced and very tasteful. So this actually expands into the interior of the car, right? That's correct. So all the sound system in the interior, I replaced it with Bav sound components. All the speakers are part of their stage one upgrade and I did their ghost under seat subwoofers um, as well as I changed the, the factory amp to their application as well. We can move on to the interior here. So the rear bath sound speakers are located here on the upper tray. You'll see here the stickers, all the tracks that I've personally taken this car to. I'm gonna to add to that list eventually. Front speakers for the bath sound upgrade are located here. And then I did do the under seat subwoofers from bath sound. So coming into the interior, I chose the Recaro SPG Profi XLs because I needed a full bucket seat for the track. I chose this specific seat because it fits my body type well and I can feel comfortable sitting in these seats for long periods of time. On the inside of these seats, you can see full custom fox red leather inserts just to tie in the rest of the fox red leather interior. The whole seat's mounted to Recaro brackets and then Mochnell uh, floor mounts. Passenger side for safety at the track, I do have a Safecraft fire extinguisher that's mounted to a Bray Krause universal mount. For the steering wheel, I went with an OEM BMW Performance electronic steering wheel V2, uh, which has all the shift lights and the telemetry stuff, which is really fun to look at when we're driving, especially at the track, um, so I can keep my eyes focused and not worry about over revving. And the little details there on that steering wheel, I have the Auto Technique carbon fiber uh, trim with the IND red M button. Going into the dash, we have the OEM BMW Performance carbon fiber dash trim and the IND uh, red stop button, which goes along with the steering wheel. And then you'll see in the very back there, the Vinoxy white gauges. I've been putting white gauges in all my cars since 95. So I, mean, I figured, heck, why stop with this one? And on the dash there, you'll see a Euro headlight switch. A lot of people will just trim the factory piece to make it functional, but I opted to go for the full unit, which activates the rear fogs. So moving up here, we went with a radar detector that I've been using for like the past 13 years. It's never failed me, but I should probably knock on wood. I went with a Valentine One radar detector. I put that to a blend mount to keep it nice and clean, and it's hardwired to the car. It turns on when the car turns on. And then moving all the way up here, I have Euro sun visors. A lot of people don't do these. They're a little expensive for, you know, just a look. But basically it removes the airbag warning stickers. So a little detail feature I did here on the doors was a Bomi's door lock cover. It's just a little fun little novelty thing that I did for this car. Um, and then you can see right below it, Future Classic did another little novelty sticker for me, which shows my setup for tires for the car and it has my screen name on that, which I love. And then the doors, we have the Hard Motorsport RS style door pulls. Really loved seeing those in Porsches. I kind of want to you know, tie that into this car. And on the doors, you can see more of the BMW Performance uh, OEM CF trim. So going down to the footwell, I went with the Pedal House aluminum pedals. I chose that specific type because I don't personally prefer the rubber pedals. They tend to wear out or tear, which you know doesn't look as good and it's not very functional. So these, you never have to worry about that because they won't wear out and they look great. The heel plate is also from Pedal House. I went with a black one for that just to not bring so much attention to it and kind of let it blend into the floor mat. I also chose to not have any engraving, which most people don't do, but I personally love the look. And one of my newest mods here is the hood latch release from Carbonex. They offered in black. I asked them if they can do a custom red color for me. 
It's the same red paint code that I use for my strut bars. They did a great job on it and it's a nice little accent to the footwell area. And then to tie everything else in with the rest of the car, I'll have OEM mats there with custom fox red piping. So in the rear, I also did custom fox red pipe floor mats back there, but a little detail what I did was have it cut around the roll cage so that you know it has that seamless look to it. And then moving to the center there, did a Denman carbon fiber center trim and it's in two by two weave to match the rest of the trim inside the car. Harnesses are Schroth three inch harnesses and they're mounted to the cage using Red Scott harness mounts. Super clean look. I'm really proud about those. You know, I was one of the first people to actually use those um, and kind of set a trend. For the roll cage, I went with a Studio RSR bolt-in option. It's to add rigidity to the chassis as well as safety on the track. We had it powder coated as close as we can to Space Gray Metallic. Do like how it came out. The whole purpose of this cage as well was to keep it modular my whole rear end. So if I do decide to take a break from tracking, I can take it out. That's why I left the rear seats in. Not to mention the Fox Red does look great. I didn't want to get rid of that. So if I did take the cage out, I do have custom leather plugs for it to you know, make it look seamless, like nothing happened. Now, all this stuff is actually really good and looks nice from the Instagram pictures, but tell me a little bit about your perspective from the driver's position. Yeah, so we can look at here in the center console. Uh, we have the Auto Technique carbon fiber handbrake handle, as well as the Auto Technique carbon fiber center console trim. This is a Avid iDrive controller. And then when we get over here, I do have a custom center mount. And I had to do that because of the shifter. This is an actual laser cut trim piece that we wrapped in Alcantara to match uh, the steering wheel. Okay, so you got the nice blend of carbon fiber and Alcantara there. And you mentioned that this thing is laser cut. That shifter, is there something special about that, isn't there? Yeah, so it's a chassis mount CAE shifter, which is you know useful on the track. So the purpose of this is the transition from the steering wheel to the shifter is close by and you know you don't have any lag and shifting as you can see here it's nice and tight and has a nice feel you cannot really miss a shift with this well i think that covers the interior as well as the exterior of the car how about we get into what the shifter connects us to wendell would you mind taking us into the engine bay sure let's go And as soon as he opens the hood of his car, you can see that we're met with a ton of carbon fiber goodies and accessories to match the theme of the car. Wendell, how about we start from this corner? Sure, over here we have Technocraft headlight covers and carbon fiber. And you can move along here to the Carbo Project. This is a custom CF snorkel. It's the top and the bottom piece. And I don't know if you notice, there is a kind of theme going on in here as well. It is red, black, and gray. Each one of these bolts, I did measure each one myself. This was years before Downstar ever came out with a kit. Um, so I'm kind of proud about that. A lot of trial and error to get all this stuff right and make sure the fitment is right. Pat myself on the back for that one. Here we have an ECS oil filter cover. I am waiting on a new one from Future Classic. They're making a custom one for me. DO88 coolant hoses. Um, then we have a Beamer World power steering reservoir that I painted myself in wrinkle black, just to kind of tone down the look of it. It, it was an polished finish. Um, I felt like it would have clashed a lot with my engine bay, so I wanted to tone down uh, the look. The valve covers are a custom wrinkle red, as well as the ignition coil covers. And I have the full golden wrench billet caps there, as you can see in the oil, uh, coolant reservoir, and the washer fluid. The strut bar is uh, ultra racing that I had custom powder coated in 
uh, Brembo Red to match the rest of my strut braces as well as the rings. Next, uh, you'll see the external reservoirs for my coilovers. I'm really proud about how I mounted those. I, I took a lot of time planning that out and making sure that it stayed functional, not too much tension on the hose when I used uh, the help of Ren Scott mounts for that. Keeps it away from the engine heat and easy accessible to adjust on the fly. Up top, you'll see the burger tuning Kel filters. Since I did have to remove the Kel filter uh, housings, so that was red as well to tie in the whole theme. And you could also see here, I also did the Downstar hardware for the hood. Uh, not too many people change those. They just go with whatever kit they provide. Moving along here, I did the Eventuri uh, airbox lid in CF, and then I did the Carb Legal dine-in intake tube. Finally, we have the newest piece uh, to my motor, which is uh, the Carbo Project CF Plenum. And what did you do for cooling? So I did the CSF triple pass radiator, um, as well as a CSF oil cooler. And the piece that's tying this all together is an ESS tuning NA tune. Now this plenum that Wendell just talked about is actually covering up what is his second engine. Because if you listen very carefully to that 30 second montage that we had in the beginning of the video, you'll realize that it sounds like something's there that actually isn't. Yeah, so I actually had a, a Harrop supercharger on this car and it's off because unfortunately blew my motor um, at the track on July 31st last year. I took it here to SV Bimmer and they diagnosed the motor for me concluded that it was rod bearing failure as it friction welded itself to the crank. At that time, I did the rod bearings. It was WPC bearings, and that was the only option available at that time since it was early on in the stages that people were trying to figure out how to resolve that issue with this motor. People, please don't do WPC bearings. It's not the <laughs> right choice. Thankfully, SV Beamer was able to source a brand new crate motor for me from BMW. They dropped it in, zero miles on it. We did BE bearings and AR people right away, regardless if they were brand new bearings. I don't want to mess with it again. And they also did a bunch of maintenance while the motor was out. You did mention to not go with the bearings that you had previously. Which ones now, knowing everything that you know, would you go with instead? Definitely BE. So uh, BE, you know, it, it's, it's tried and proven uh, from what we've seen on the forums and everything. Those I feel are the best choice for this S65. Okay. And just take notes here, guys, is that, you know, as we said, Wendell got this car, he built it up, and he did a lot of things that weren't around. As he mentioned, the Downstar hardware, he had to actually take the measurements of that. So we kind of say that he's the grandfather or the reason why the Downstar fitment fits so well now. And then as far as the bearings that he just mentioned is that sometimes things that we do on our cars, they work right away. Sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it doesn't at all. And there's nothing to be ashamed of at all with that. It's really having the humility and humbleness that Wendell does in order to say, I tried it, it didn't work out. How can we improve? And I think having that attitude is what led Wendell to making such an excellent build. But this actually ties into how we came together, SVB and yourself. As you said, we helped with the engine, but we also did some work on the underside of the car, right? Right, uh, SVB did the rear end uh, subframe and the lower control arm. Is it all right if we lift the car and take a look? Sure, let's go. But before we jump into the rear suspension, let's cover the front suspension first. So what we did here in the front, we did the full SPL uh, front arms. So we can start with the lower control arm here, the tension arm over here, and the steering tie rod. And I do have Hotchkiss front sway bar, which is thicker than stock. I love this mod. Foil over up there. This is my ASC 5200, and I'm running 14K springs up front, and then 8K springs in the rear. Up front here, you'll see the Turner uh, Motorsports skid plate. Uh, gives a little more clearance from the ground as well as protects the front end. So moving further down, we have the RPI X-Pipe, as you can see here, it's a full catalyst system. And you actually have something hidden right here, don't you? I do. Yeah, it's the uh, M Factory version one carbon fiber drive shaft, which is one of my favorite mods. I love how it makes a car and the power delivery feel more direct. Coming along further down, 
Another rare piece that I had imported from Japan, it's a CPM center brace here. It gives a little more ground clearance and it's just improvement on factory design. So moving further along the rear here, SV Bimmer actually installed the rear diff bushings as well as this rare diff brace that you don't see on many cars nowadays. I don't know how to pronounce the brand, it's D-E-F-I-V, but it is a discontinued part and it's supposed to reduce any kind of wheel hop. And then you can see here all the suspension arms that we did. I installed fall line trailing arm and this is an arm that you don't see as well on a bunch of E90X M3s. This is for a true rear coilover conversion, which my ASC 5200s are. So it basically reduces the, the weight and the bulkiness of the factory arm. And like I said, I'm running 8K springs back here. The reason why I went with true recoilover is mainly for track use. So it's for the performance and the feel of the car. SV Bimmer did do all the rest of the rear work here. All the ground control arms that are offered, as well as the Hotchkiss uh, rear sway and the solid subframe bushings, which I also love. I highly recommend that to anybody. While the rear control arms have the Powerflex bushings inside. And this wouldn't be a true feature build video if we didn't include one critical piece that we've left out until now, and that is the exhaust. What are you currently running? Uh, so I'm running one of my dream exhausts. It is the Akrapovich rear section. As you can see here, full titanium with carbon fiber tips that's hidden underneath the Varus under tray. And as we come out to take a look at those exhaust tips, Wendell actually has a unique design on his bumper that you might think at first look is comparable to those tracks that he's accomplished on his rear windshield. But Wendell, could you tell us a little bit about your rear bumper? Yeah, uh, so when my engine blew at the track, the rear end of my car actually caught fire and that's the remnants of it and melted my rear bumper. <laughs> Fortunately, I do have a overcoat on this car, which potentially saved it from being worse, um, but I'm choosing to leave that on the rear bumper as kind of like a badge of honor. I'm proud of about what happened because it's kind of formed, you know, me and this journey with this car, you know, and it reminds me to, you know, not take anything for granted. Things will can change at any day and just stay humble and, and keep pushing forward. And I think that's a great attitude to have because Wendell actually is a very comparable mechanic in his own right. And this is nothing to be ashamed about because every car has its own journey, its own story. And this is part of this car story along with Wendell's. And it just goes to show that sometimes things go right, right away, sometimes it doesn't. But having the humility that Wendell does allows you to have a build like this. And whether you're just starting out, just take your time, no need to rush. And for those beginners out there, potentially just getting into the E90 platform, maybe even beginner level DIYers, what would you recommend to take that one step forward? Uh, I would definitely try to do something on the exterior. Uh, for example, like doing the front grills or the front lip. Uh, you can see the difference right away for that instant uh, gratification. So I'd definitely uh, recommend that first. Ah, thank you so much, Wendell. Now, would you mind if we lowered down the car and took one more look at it? Yeah, let's do it, man.
And just like that, we've concluded our second feature build video of the E90 M3. Wendell, thank you so much for taking the time to show us your M3 from the day you got it all the way up until now, as well as from the ground up. And we also wanna appreciate him for kind of forging that path forward for future E90 users, making those small detail items a little bit more streamlined to get in those packages that we currently see today. But Wendell, what's next? Yeah, so I'm actually moving to a new state uh, next month. So I kind of want to make the car a little more practical for use with my family. My son's getting bigger, so I kind of want to take him and my wife with me to events. So unfortunately, I'm going to be taking the cage out uh, temporarily for now, since I am taking a break from tracking. Um, and I'm most likely going to change the seats to a more comfort friendly Carl Sportster CS that I'll have redone in Fox Red. I think this just goes to the statement that you can have whatever build you want. If you take your time, you do it right, and you have enough humility as Wendell did, even though things might not go perfectly the first time around. Even if you have a small hiccup, as long as you're willing to accept that sometimes it doesn't go that way, but you're willing to learn and improve in the future, then your car can be just as nice as this E90 M3 that we have here today. And if you need anything such as the resources from today's video, it's gonna be in the links down in the description. If you have any questions for us, including Wendell, please leave those down in the comment section. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you wanna see this car in action, make sure to hit the link in the top right-hand corner. And we'll see all of you in the next one.